everyone, welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty podcast featuring crochet, knitting and sewing mainly. You will be able to find the show notes for this podcast, for this episode, um, on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll also put a link in the down bar below here on YouTube. You can also navigate this video using the timestamps in the down bar below. I'll have a different section for each of the things I talk about, so you can click on those uh, to jump to the bits you're interested in, and you can also use the navigation bar, which comes up on the bottom of the screen when you hover your mouse there. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, just where I am on the internet, so at my blog, which I've mentioned, cherryheart.co.uk, and I'm also on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT. Um, and anywhere else I'm on the internet, it'll be as Cherry Heart. Um, so that's it. Um, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Thank you for coming back to watch. It's lovely to have you here. And if you're new, um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like what you see. Um, and thanks for checking me out. So I'll jump straight into it, as I think I pretty much always say. But where to begin? Ah, oh, finished object, let's do because I talked about this in the last podcast, so there's not much to add other than I have finished my knitted cowl. So this is a stash busting project um, and I've used Debbie Bliss yarns, so Debbie Bliss lace weight yarns, but I held it double, so it's coming out as more or less a double knit. Um, and I think last time I had almost completed it and I just needed to do this top rib ribbing or maybe I'd even done the top rib ribbing but the bottom I actually had as a pico hem originally but it was flaring out quite a lot and I wasn't happy with it and I liked how the ribbing looked um, and how nice and straight it was so yeah I just went ahead and ripped out that bottom bit and uh, yeah replaced it with a few rows of ribbon instead. So that's all done. Um, nothing else to say about it really other than it was a nice mindless project. I'm just showing, turning this round to show you my, not my seam but because I knit it in the round but just my where my rows changed. So I tried using the jogless jog technique um, which kind of worked quite well. The only reason it didn't work as well as it should have done is I carried this white yarn up. So um, where I switched to the colours, and obviously I snipped the yarn for the colour each time, the white I just sort of held up behind and then just started knitting with it again. So I think that's the reason it's sort of not as quite a nice level as it could have been. But it's not bad. This one's good, look, that's... You can barely see the join there, look at that. Um, yeah, so you can just Google that, Jogless Jog, or I'll try and uh, pop it in my show notes if I remember. So yeah, so that's finished. And I was also saying that I wasn't amazingly happy with the width because I just totally guessed um, on the width. And I also used five mil needles instead of, I guess four would be more standard for double knit. I used five purely because those were the ends that I had screwed into my knit pro needles at the time and I couldn't be bothered to change it um, and I just cast on until I thought oh that looks about enough which I think was 180 stitches um, and then I thought I think I've made it too wide because I like quite a tight fitting cow but actually I've tried it on and it's not too bad you sort of can snuggle it up round sort of like that quite nicely so yeah I think that'll be fine so now I've shown you it in its lovely, relatively pristine state, I will, uh, I can start wearing that now because it is definitely cold enough to need something. Um, yeah, so that's my finished object. Ooh, my candle smells nice, the smell's just starting to come through now. Lovely. Um, so this is a work in progress that I'm going to show you next. I haven't made a tremendous amount of progress on this, but I thought I'd just give you a little update. 
and it's my Daisy Puffs blanket which isn't fitting on let's scoot back a bit is that fitting on now I can't see <laughs> Yeah, if I stretch really high. So there we go, I've kept it quite small. I'll come back in because you won't be able to hear me speaking very well otherwise. I know what these I know what these microphones are like. Um let's fold this up a bit, make it a little bit easier. Yes, I'm keeping it quite small. Uh, I think I was going to add another couple of rows when I originally planned it, but sort of seeing how it looks like this, I thought, is that all going to fit on the screen? I thought that looked more or less in proportion. I don't know if you heard that. I was just saying, I think that looked quite a nice proportion for rectangle size for a little baby blanket. So the only thing I have done is I think I joined the last couple of rows and I've put in these side half hexagons on either side. Um, but I haven't done the little top bits yet. So it's progressing slowly. But I have got um, tutorials for the hexagons and how I'm joining them. They are on my channel, so I'll link to those as well. Um, because I'm writing up a pattern, but I haven't finished it yet. And obviously, as it's still in progress, I don't know quite uh, where I'm going with it. I'm I'm going to have to start thinking about what the border will be like now. So I know I'm going to get a nice, um, what's the word, sort of squared off. I'm squaring off so I've got a nice straight rectangle. So I don't need to worry too much about sort of incorporating the points. Although I am kind of tempted to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to think about what the border should be. I guess the cream would make the most sense. I'm kind of tempted. I kind of want to use the colours in the border, but I'm like not quite sure how to do that. So, yeah, that's that's in the mulling zone at the moment. Um, while well, I figure out what I'm going to do with it. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that's all there is to say about that one. Although, having mentioned patterns, I would also say that my uh, crochet star quilt um, that you would have seen if you were here last time, um, I know some of you are waiting for the pattern on that. I have, I've, well, I've got the pattern written up, I'm almost there, but I just need to do some little um, examples of the border because I tried out um, four different types of borders. Um, and I sort of plumped for one of them, but there was quite a bit of interest in some of the others I did. So I've written them up, but I just want to sort of show, you know, do a photo and show. And I also want a little bit of a tutorial for the how I did the spike stitch that I used on my border. So yeah, I've just got those sort of final bits to add in. And then that will be coming out. So it's coming on. Slowly things progress in the background. And then while we were also talking of patterns... I've got something new to show you. Um, now I've just finished this but I haven't blocked it yet. So it's not quite ready to show really but I'm going to show it now because time is marching and if I don't mention it it's going to be getting too late. I'm being quite cryptic aren't I? Let me show you. So what I've been working on is a pattern that I've wanted to do for a long time and it's a pattern that will be a crochet project that you could do using beautiful yarn calendar minis. Um, so I'm assuming you've heard about these. So it's like an advent calendar, but with yarn. So you get little mini skeins for each of the 24 days up to Christmas. And you can get various different ones, either 20 grams or 10 grams or even fives. Uh, a lot of times it's in four ply yarn, sometimes it's double knit, other things and other things. Um, yeah, so they've been popular for a lot of times, for a lot of years now, and I've had quite a few myself, and I I just love them. I really love them. They're such, I mean, they are expensive because obviously you're buying quite a, 
lot of yarn in one go even though it's a little bit each day 24 days adds up and that's a lot of yarn um but it's just such a delight to open each one of those little packages each day and see what's inside so i really enjoy it and i've also really enjoyed working on some of the um advent calendar projects that people have created to sort of complement um just complement those calendars you know go to with those kind of yarn requirements so yeah so as i've enjoyed that so much myself and also a lot of the patterns that go to accompany them they're so often knitting patterns and i haven't really found very many barely any or well i couldn't find that many anyway crochet versions i just thought it would just be perfect because although i've enjoyed knitting ones that i have done in the past it would just be perfect if i could enjoy a crochet one so i've done a pattern for that it's a very long-winded speech before i show you it isn't it but um how to begin it's a scarf or a wrap i suppose as that kind of suits the uh, format quite nicely and let me just i'm going it's quite long so i'm going to try and show you in sections so let's give you a sort of bit of a oh what's the best way to show this this is difficult i'll probably better put some photos in and um, video when i've what's the word when i've blocked it and it's all finished it's not oh hang on hang on hang on so a few months ago i made this board that i could perhaps hold oh my hair is being so floppy and weird i am um, yes yeah, so i made this kind of board thing that i thought would be handy for showing things sometimes when i'm trying to hold up little things i just wondered if i put this on here so you get a background whether you'd see the pattern better so it's got a little ooh, let's get nice and close holy pattern in there with a nice bobble in I don't know if you can see that and then this nice textured section as well I'm trying to show you well let's show you the colours first so I'll hold it up and cycle through the colours to show you those so I made this one because it was kind of my final test version in stashed minis so either minis that i'd got from previous oh there look you can see the pattern nicely there that's perfect that shows it beautifully um so these are either minis that i got in previous calendars or they're leftover yarns that i've used unsurprisingly it shows up better against the more semi-solid the more subtle shades whereas obviously the variegated it does get a little bit more lost <clears throat> almost there and finally ending with a bit of purple there we go <laughs> that took a while didn't it um yes so obviously that was 24 colors there i've showed you um, and what I quite like about it, let's get this up again and hang it over. Right, um, the dog just popped in so I had to break there for a moment. What was I saying? Yes, yeah, so I've kind of designed this for um, a conventional yarn advent calendar if you like. So it's in full ply yarn and there's 24 of these sections so that's 24 days of a 20 gram mini. So you can get other advent calendars but this is for a four ply, four ply 24 days of uh, 20 grams. Um, and so each of these bands it takes a little less than 20 grams actually so you've got a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, I sort of found I was taking a it depends on the yarn because I use different yarns in this so it will depend on who uh, you've got your calendar for and what exact yarn they use but I'm using sort of somewhere between 16 or 18 to 18 grams depending on the different yarns I've used in this so I wanted to sort of get an idea of what the range would be but none of them used over 18 so that's quite good so it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and like I say, uh, uh, or did I say, I'm not sure. So I've made the pattern, or what I hope I have made the pattern like, is simple, but still interesting enough to hold the interest 
um, for each day. So once you know what you're doing for one of these bands, you should just be able to join your new colour and then you can start working your new band. And there's a few differences on each row to keep it interesting, but like I say, quite nice and simple to memorise once you've got the basic idea of it. And the other thing that I really, really love about this design, if I do say so myself, um, is the fact that once you have made it, once you've added your last colour, that's it, it's completely finished. So you don't have to go back and add on the border, that's all done and incorporated into it. So it's got this pretty edging, which you can't see to the best advantage yet because I haven't blocked it. It's gonna, I'm gonna block it so these little loops come out a little more. And the start and the end are the panels that are slightly different because I've made the border go round so it'll be at the beginning and this is the end panel so those little that little um, section where it's got the edging that's all completely built into the pattern as you work it so it's all incorporated so if you weave in your ends as you go um, yeah the second you put the last colour on and you've woven in those ends you will be done so I'm calling this my baubles and berries wrap. So these are some sort of unspecified Christmas flower with a berry in the middle. <laughs> so these are the berries. This is very tenuous so stay with me. And then these sort of blobby bits are kind of going to be my baubles. Um, I was thinking these could kind of be poinsettias, maybe. It's a little bit loose but in terms of linking it to Christmas but I wanted a kind of Christmassy name for it so that's what I'm going with baubles and berries wrap the pattern is finished it is ready to go I have got to block this and do some final photography um, but yeah I'm hoping to get that out quite soon so that you guys can get a copy if you would like to and sort of plan out I mean maybe you've already ordered an advent calendar and got that look forward to look forward to but obviously maybe you haven't this year you know it's uh, and it's ex it's an expensive item maybe you got it earlier in the year because they all come a lot of them come out earlier um, but maybe you want to use scrap yarn so you know if you knit a pair of socks you generally get a reasonable amount of yarn left over so maybe you have enough scraps Maybe you're doing a swap with someone and uh, you'll get enough yarn that way. Um, and then obviously if you wanted to use a different kind of yarn, if you've got scraps, enough scraps in a DK or a sport weight, uh, then yeah, you could do that as well. And if you want to modify it, obviously you can just um, include more or less of these panels and... Um, you could change the width as well so it's quite adaptable um, yeah I hope I hope it, it's something that people will be able to enjoy over Christmas it's certainly a project I've enjoyed working on and um, I may even make another one at Christmas my original plan I've got some beautiful minis set aside and this was going to be my final t well this is my final test version um, so I was just going to make another one just to enjoy the process really because I do like that idea of um, yeah just each day you sit you do your sort of amount of crochet on this and then you put it to the side and you do something else it's quite nice um, obviously not always achievable at Christmas time to get them all out day by day is you know on schedule as it were but then you've got that nice sort of Christmas Boxing Day to New Year period where you can maybe catch up and things. That's all. I've done that too. That's quite nice. Um, yeah, so there we go. The baubles and berries wrap. I will get that released soon. So look out on my blog. I'll put it on there. Look out on my social media. Uh, Sandra Cherry HRT on Instagram. And yes, I shall get it up in the usual places. Ravelry. Etsy, I guess guess although I always have a little bit of trepidation about using Etsy because it can be a bit hard work um, and then love crafts as well so you'll have choices of buying 
platforms too. Let's put this down and put it away. But yeah, I wanted to sort of tell you about that because we're getting through November now, aren't we? So I better get on with getting it out and getting it published and ready. So the yarns, um, if you're interested in those, sorry, just a tangent by the way, I'm a lot of them are from well they're all from stash as i've said so some of them are quite old some of them are from old advent calendars i've got them here i'm looking at so these are what i have left over so obviously some bits were bigger to start with some i've just got a bit of the mini left over um <laughs> the yarn is dive bombing us um yeah, I've just got some of my absolute favourites in here, but I wanted something that, you know, where the colours kind of blended from one to the other reasonably naturally without it being jarring. And then on my one where I'm going to um, hopefully make another one at Christmas, I've got more of a subtle blend and it's more of a uh, um, alternate between a slightly deeper shade and a paler, deeper, paler, deeper, paler. So that's what I'll do for my other one. But yeah. That was fun. So yes, if you are interested, I have written down all the colours I've used. Um, but like I say, whether that is very helpful, because you might not be able to get them anymore, I don't know. But it is there if you're interested. very exciting finished object to show you it's my Alice Caroline flower garden quilt my hand sewn quilt so excited um yeah look at it look at its joyfulness um obviously very hard to show you on a podcast while I'm sitting here at the desk um, I will put footage in. I have taken footage. I will put some in. Let you have a look at it now. then like I had to actually wait for the footage to uh, play um yes I hope you got a decent look at it there but uh, I posted on Instagram the other day that I just had the binding to sew down and yes yeah, so I'm done oh my goodness I love this thing so much it feels amazing um I actually splashed out to get proper wool based uh, quilt wadding for this um, which I've only used on smaller projects before whenever I've made a full size quilt before I used a different type of wadding which is actually made from recycled plastic bottles so it's a really you know I thought that was a really good choice 
and it's lovely but this is something else entirely so I don't know if it's that wool wadding or the fact it's all gorgeous gorgeous liberty but it's just so soft and malleable and drapey and warm and just delicious that yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's a lovely thing. It is so divine. So yeah, I've hand sewn, if you haven't been here before and known the ginormous saga. So this has been almost two years in the making. So I started it, I think, February of last year. Um, there's a, they send you a box, a quilt box each month with different fabrics in and you had to make so many hexagons up each month. Um, so I started in February, I was a little late, but there were still some left. So I got the January and February box together. Um, and then obviously each month after that. Um, yeah, so I managed to make most of my uh, blocks, my motifs up more or less in time, I think. Did I keep to a sort of... I can't even remember now or whether it went over into the next year, this year and then sewing it together and then the hand quilting so I hand quilted the whole thing as well which I can't even find a bit where it's likely to show up I'll show you on the back though you can see on the back so yeah all hand quilted um, and then so the only bit of machine work I did at all was the initial bit of binding so sewing on the initial bit and then when I turned it to the back obviously I hand quilted that round in the normal way so yes there it is my hand made quilt Look at all that binding oh doesn't it perfect and all those gorgeous Liberty fabrics. So the only thing I didn't Liberty was the back. You could have got, they had it on the site that you could buy the backing and have that entirely Liberty as well. But I thought, I quite like seeing the stitching on the plane now that I've done that. Um, I thought it'd be a bit overkill because it was a lot of extra money. And you know, you want to see the, I put all this work into this side, that's the side I'm going to show off, I'm not going to be having it the other way up. So yeah, I just went for a plain backing, but yeah, I really like that, I like that you can kind of see the stitching and have a plain aside. Um, yeah, so there isn't a lot to say about it that I haven't said before. Um, it's all gorgeous Liberty fabrics. I've said it's from Alice Caroline. She does, um, I think, a couple of different options of block of the month quilts each year as far as I can gather I know there was definitely some that came out this year um, 2022 that I saw her um, advertising and then I guess there'll be some next year so what's quite nice about it is obviously if you had to go out and buy this it would cost hundreds let's not beat about the bush it would cost hundreds um, because of all this gorgeous Liberty fabric. But doing it, I mean, I think you can pay in like quarterly, but I paid monthly and it was like, it was less than 35 pounds. I think it was 33 pounds something. I, you know, that's last year now. So with the way of the world, I'm sure it's gone up, but it, it just felt more manageable that way. I felt like, you know, I could afford that each month and then that coming through the door was like a lovely little present every single month and then you know and it, it staggers you out like a month comes and then you do those ones then you put it aside for a, you know a bit until the next month comes and it's just a really really lovely way of doing it so I've really enjoyed the whole experience of it there were quite a lot of bits I was dreading sewing it together I was absolutely dreading hand quilting I was absolutely dreading but it kind of all worked out really my hand quilting is probably the worst bit it's not as consistent as it well certainly not as consistent as it could have been but and I have got some slight wrinkling on a couple of places on the back the front looks more or less fine I think there's a little bit on the front a little tiny bit there's a couple of places on the back where it doesn't lie quite 100% flat but you know a quilt's supposed to be crinkly isn't it so you can get away with it 
that's what I say anyway. But you know, I, I just can't be upset about it or disappointed about it because I'm just so proud of myself for <laughs> hand quilting the whole thing. That surpasses any little niggles about, you know, my stitches could be a little bit more even or a little bit shorter or whatever. Yeah, so I'm not fast. The only thing I do wish I'd done differently is my binding. Because I made my quilt, I actually made my quilt a tiny bit smaller, though I left like one strip of hexagons out because of the differences in colours. So there's some very, very pale ones. There's quite a lot of mid-range ones and there's, there was a couple of really dark or really bright ones. And for me, they just they just stood out too much and dominated the rest of the blanket too much. It's just my personal preference, I guess. I mean, some of them, there's a dark one in here, like this one I left in, it's really dark. It's got, you know, you've got that and then you've got that. That's quite a lot of, but this one I really loved. Um, you know, this one's quite bright as well, but I left that in. So yeah, there was just a few that I just thought just dominated my eye too much that I just couldn't, I, f I couldn't put them in. And because I changed the order, they give you the layout as well in the um, pack. It gives you a complete guide of which motif to put where and everything. It guides you through the entire thing. So I did put that aside and I just came up with my own arrangement and I missed those few out and it, it just, for me, that just looked like the more harmonious result that I was happier with. So yeah, as a result, it's a long-winded way of saying, the binding fabric, I actually had more than I needed um, because obviously my lengths were a bit shorter. Um, so, but I'd forgotten about this when I came to do the binding is the point. So I very carefully measured it all out, calculated what I'd need, re-measured it, recalculated because I thought if I cut this wrong, I'm going to be in all kinds of problems. So I thought I've got plenty, I've got plenty of fabric. I'm like, I've got, have I done this wrong? You know, because I've got a lot, a lot of fabric here. And, but you know, after I sort of double checked and sort of did the sums again, I thought I am right. So I cut it and I trimmed down my quilt and sewed it on. And only after that, I thought, of course, you've got more binding fabric, you annoying person. Um, I could have, my point is I could have had it thicker. So I think in an ideal world where I've kept this quite sort of tight and just kept to the quarter inch thinking that was the correct thing to do. For a start, I'm not sure. I, I've just realised I didn't actually check what the instructions said to do. I thought, oh, I've by, you know, I've done quilt binding before. I know what I'm doing, and I've gone ahead, and I've thought, oh, everything's quarters with quilts. I'll just do like a quarter inch binding. Whereas I'm sure, thinking about it now, even my other quilts I've done wider than that. <sighs> I am a chump. Anyway, I've trimmed it all down and it's really quite thin. So I do wish that I had used my extra fabric and left more on and had an ex, you know, a wider binding. That is my only, you know, what's the word, regret, I suppose. That's the only thing I wish I'd done differently. But to be honest, now it's all done and sewed on. I don't even really care about that because altogether it just looks lovely. So, yeah, very happy, very pleased with that. Lost a bit of paper overboard. Um, yeah, so at the moment it's sitting on my bed. It doesn't really go with my bedroom, but I'm so proud of it. It's sitting on my bed. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know where it will live permanently. I will have to think about that. But, yeah, it's just lovely. I might have it down in the living room for a bit as well because it is nice and warm to snuggle under. Right, let's move on. Right, so battery is getting low and I have one more project to talk about. So let's get on with it. My hair will behave. So I spoke about this again last time. I hadn't started at the time, but it's my lace and boxy fade, I think it's called. No, Lace and Fade Boxy it's called. So this is a knitted project. Um, it's by Hokey Loka Telly, who is a fantastic designer and I've made some of her designs before and I really love her stuff. 
Um, there you go, that's in case you don't believe me that that's what that's called. Why am I? Why, why, why? Um, I didn't print out the first page. I'm just, yes, I printed it out in colour by mistake. So I've got a picture I can show you of what it should look like when it's done. And there goes the battery. So I shall have to change that and see you in a mo. Right, we are back. Um, Yes, yeah, so I've shown you the picture on there of what that looks like. And uh, so now I have started it. So let's show you. Oh, I had this on. I tried this on quickly the other day. So I had it on better, bigger, like I put it on a bigger loop so that I could fit it over my body. And that would have been better to show you. But never mind. We shall struggle on like this. <clears throat> Right, there we go. That is all I have so far. Let's just show you that beautiful yarn, nice and close up. Isn't it gorgeous? I love it. And I've done my first lace, lacy section, and then I'm just started my second lacy section. So I've got my mohair on, and yeah, I'm doing all right with it actually. So let's talk about yarn first. So I am using, here's the one I've caked up, just so you can see it, admire it, love it. And here it is in the skein, Hank, whatever. Um, but it's a dandelion and dogwood yarn and it is bottle brush Christmas trees, which I think I got maybe a couple of years ago. Um, so it's perfect, they're perfect sock yarn, 100 grams, and it's a 80-20 superwash merino and nylon blend. And because it's, ooh, it do? there we go, can you see that? It's got quite a high twist on it is what I'm trying to show you there. But this, to knit with, what on earth was that? Strange bangs outside. Um, but this, to knit with, it's delicious i love it love it love it love it so yes that's in very enjoyable um so i've got a couple of skeins wound up and then the um mohair is dandelion and dogwood as well and i think it's called i haven't got another one of these in here because i'm hoping one will be enough um She's Naked is the colourway. I think it's just their mohair. I don't think there's lots of different mohairs. So I think it's just their mohair yarn, whatever that is. So that's what I'm using with it. Um, now, pattern. I am following the pattern, but I'm also not... Well, I am following the pattern, but I'm modifying it. So what I have done is because I'm generally find that I need a bit of more length um, than the, what's the word, you know, than that's the naturally written into the pattern. I always find I need to add a little bit more length to the body and to the arms. So, but I don't want it to be absolutely, so I normally just, right, compose yourself. So I normally have to just knit a little bit more on the end so that's fine but on this because it's striped I kind of wanted to just extend each stripe a little bit so what I'm doing is I am following the sort of row instructions for size four I think um, which is a little bit bigger than I want so where it sort of says, you know, it says how long to knit these stripes, I'm going by row four. And then where it says what to do with the stitches, like how many to cast on and, you know, where to, how many to put on the neck and all of that sort of business. I'm following, well, I start, I, my plan was to follow the smallest size for that, just to sort of bring it in a little bit. Because although it's supposed to be really boxy, it's like really, really wide. I don't know if you can sort of see on there like how much extra there is. Um, so it's lovely, but you do get quite a lot of it, like, you know, right out to here, which I didn't want. So I wanted to bring that in a bit. 
So in the end I actually went for one size lower than is written into the pattern. Um, but if you look at, you know, if you had the pattern and you can look at the multiples, you can kind of see where the next size down would go, if that makes sense. So, you know, there'll be a number of stitches difference. And then, so I just took off another little set of those numbers. So that's how I've worked out my width. And then, like I say, with the length, then I'm following the pattern and knitting to a one of the slightly bigger sizes. So hopefully that will work. I have done that on another pattern before and it seemed to work quite well so it does mean I just you know you kind of think about it a little bit more as you're doing it just to make sure you haven't done something that's going to stuff it up but and that's another reason why I wanted to try, try it on because I kind of um, wanted to make sure my sleeve hole would still be okay and still fit okay because I'd been sort of you know messing around with the sizing but it seems fine it seems good so yeah hopefully that will work out well um, I didn't bother to do a gauge swatch, that's the other thing. Um, yeah, I know, it's naughty, I know I should, but what I'm finding is, quite often, <laughs> as you knit a gauge swatch, and you go, oh, that's perfect, and then you knit the final garment, and you're either more relaxed so your gauge relaxes more or by the time you've got the entire weight of the garment it kind of changes the gauge anyway and yeah I just couldn't be bothered because I thought of all the times that I've knit a gauge for a jumper like you know sometimes it pays off if you're a million miles out but you know I use four ply yarn a lot and I kind of know the needle so I've got a you know, I kind of got a very good starting point of what's going to happen because normally I have to go up a needle size to make a pattern gauge work. And this time I haven't because I want to keep that sort of tightness of the width so it's not too, too baggy. Um, obviously that means I'm going to have to add more rows, which I've planned for anyway because I'm a little bit taller. And then I'll probably have to add a few more to account for the gauge as well but looking at the gauge I am getting it's not a million miles off pattern anyway but I know like even not a million miles off gauge can make a lot of difference but I'm not far off where I need to be and I've measured what I've got here and extrapolated that out to where I will finish and it's looking sorry covering my mouth and it's looking good and the width I've already can see and I've tested and that's looking good so I'm hoping I'm hoping it won't be an abject disaster and I'll regret it horribly, but it's it's looking good, it's looking on track, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this project at the moment. I'm liking the yarn, I'm loving the yarn. The mohair lace does give me a few, um, that's concerns, anxiety, tension. It makes me feel a little bit tense because obviously frogging back mohair is horrid. Well, actually, frogging it back, I found, isn't so bad. Tinking it back is horrible. Um, so on the first section... Um, yeah, so I, I was split. It was before I joined for the sleeve. So I did the first section, it went perfect. Then I did the second section, thinking I knew what I was doing. And of course, made a join almost mess of it. So there's quite a few times when I was trying to tink back. And then in the end, I think I'm... You know, that thing where you get six rows in and then you notice a mistake on row one and so so I actually just ripped it back but actually that wasn't too bad it actually came away quite nicely there the mohair didn't grip as much as when I just tried to do them individually strange but there it is um yes so broadly enjoying that slightly concerned about how long it will take me to finish it given given that it is a very wide boxy jumper but it's coming along all right so far. Right, I'm going to leave it there for today then because what started out as a short episode is now feeling like quite a long episode. So um, I'll stop now and see if I can get that edited into some kind of shape and I will get that wrap blocked and get some footage so I can pop that in for you as well. And um, yeah, so that's it from me. I hope you get a few moments to enjoy some lovely 
peaceful crafting time. But until we see each other again, I'll say bye.